This series here is called the harmonic series, and we want to think about whether this converges or diverges. Here's a visual metaphor that we've seen before. The terms I'm adding up are one and a half and a third and a quarter. So the height of this dark blue is one and the height of the teal is a half and the height of the pink is a third. The sum is their combined height. As I keep adding them up, am I getting closer and closer to some ceiling or am I growing without bound? To review the limit as n goes to infinity of the things being added is zero. That means the divergence test doesn't tell us anything. Maybe when I add them up, they get closer and closer to some finite number. Maybe when I add them up, they keep growing out towards infinity. Here's another very related visual metaphor. Now, instead of height, I'm thinking of area. So the first term in this series is one, and this rectangle has area one. The second term in this series is a half. This rectangle has area one half. The third term in this series has area one third. This rectangle has area one third. So evaluating the series is the same as evaluating this uh, blue area. If I could add up all of these triangles, the area they would have is the same as the series. When we were first talking about sequences, we were talking about their limit laws, and we saw that it was sometimes useful to compare them to a related function. The terms of our sequence start one and a half, but there's nothing in between. There's no one and a half term. On the other hand, let's think about the continuous function, at least continuous over the domain that we're concerned with, 1 over x. Here's 1 over x, and I can see that there's a relationship between the area under the curve and the area in the boxes. In particular, the curve has less area. I can see that if I'm just taking the area underneath the curve, I'm missing out on some of the area that's being counted by my series. So that if I take any end point here and I compare the partial sum of the series and the area under the curve, the curve has less area. Now we know how to deal with these types of improper integrals. We deal with them using a limit. The integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx is the limit as my top bound goes to infinity of the area under the curve 1 to that top bound. 1 over x dx, that's the limit as b goes to infinity of log b minus log 1. Log 1, of course, is 0, so I get the limit as b goes to infinity of log b, which is infinity. I take the area underneath this pink curve. As th this right end point gets bigger and bigger, I accumulate more and more area, and it grows without bounds. So if I take this right end point far enough, I have a million square miles, say, underneath that curve. And then my series, my partial sums, are even bigger than that. So that means my partial sums are definitely going to infinity. So because the improper integral is divergent, the series is divergent as well. Now remember, this failed the divergence test. The things I'm adding up are indeed getting smaller and smaller and getting closer and closer to zero, but they're somehow not getting small fast enough, that even though they're getting very small, when I put them all together, their sum grows and grows and grows without bound. We can generalize this idea beyond just the harmonic series. This is called the integral test. Now I need my function to be fairly well behaved for this to work. So if I take the terms I'm adding up, think of them as a function rather than as a sequence. If this function is continuous, positive, and decreasing on the area in question, then the integral and the series behave the same way. If one of them converges, the other one converges, and if one of them diverges, the other one diverges. Let's see an example. Here's a series. We can start by considering the divergence test. If the divergence test works, it's pretty much the fastest test there is. So it's nice to at least get used to thinking in your head, does the divergence test work? So I take the limit as n goes to infinity of the terms being added up. That's 1 over n times the natural log of n. And this limit is indeed 0. I can see that this denominator 
is going to infinity. So the limit is zero. So no, we cannot use the divergence test. We need something a little bit higher power than that. So let's think about the integral test. One over n log n, okay, it exists when n is equal to 10 and when is n equal to 11 and n is equal to 12, but I can also think of this as a function that exists uh, in between those spaces as well. So I think of this function, one over x log x, and I need to check that it is positive, continuous, and decreasing. So it's true that it's positive over the interval we're concerned with. If x is greater than 1, then log x is positive, and x is positive as well. So this function is positive over the interval that matters. It's also continuous over the interval that matters. The only discontinuity of log x is at 0 and negative values of x. And finally, it is decreasing because my denominator is increasing. Sometimes it's not so clear that a function is decreasing, and the way we can find that is usually by taking a derivative. Okay, so these three things are true. That means we are allowed to use the integral test. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take the integral on the interval in question, and I'm going to evaluate it. This is a nice review of improper integrals and also integration techniques. So this is a good chance for you to pause the video evaluate this improper integral, and then come back. The first thing we do is we can fix the improperness. I'm going to replace that upper bound with a limit. So now what I have is a proper integral, but I still need to figure out how to evaluate it. I can do so with a u substitution. If I let u be the natural log of x, then du is 1 over x dx. So for my integrand, I get 1 over u du. Now I need to fix my bounds as well. If x is equal to 10, then u is the natural log of 10. And if x is equal to b, then u is the natural log of b. The antiderivative of 1 over u is natural log of the absolute value of u. So this is log of log of b minus log of log of 10. Now I just need to figure out this limit. As n goes to infinity, oops, these should be b's, huh? As b goes to infinity, log of b goes to infinity, and log of infinity still goes to infinity. So and this is just some finite number. So this limit is infinite. That means the integral diverges then by the integral test. My series diverges as well. My series and my integral are going to behave the same way. If one diverges, the other diverges. If I want to picture what's going on, just to kind of remind myself what's in the background of these calculations, I'm trying to figure out what happens with the sum of these blue areas. So the this rectangle has area 1 over 10 log 10, this rectangle has area 1 over 11 log 11, and so on. The series is the area of all of these rectangles added together. That's something I don't have a lot of tools for. But what I do have a lot of tools for is area underneath a curve. So I take this function 1 over x log x, which is somehow a bit more refined than 1 over n log n, and I compare the area under the curve to the area underneath those rectangles. By the integral test, I'm allowed to do that because this function here has the three properties that I need. It is positive, it is decreasing, and it is continuous. So whatever happens to the area under the curve happens to the area of the blocks as well. In this case, the area under the curve, as I extend my curve out further and further, is going to infinity. And there's even more area underneath those blocks. So that sum goes to infinity as well. That tells us our series diverges 
even though the terms we're adding up are converging to zero. Now we have two tests. We have the divergence test and the integral test. Here's a series. I want to know, does the series converge or diverge? When I try and add up infinitely many terms, does that give me something meaningful or not? Pause the video. Try to answer that question using the tests we have so far. Let's start by checking whether the divergence test will make this work. I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the terms being added up, that's e to the negative n. I can rewrite that to make it a little bit easier to see as the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over e to the n. The denominator is going to infinity, so this is going to 0, and this is the not helpful case with the divergence test. If the terms I'm adding up are going to 0, maybe the series converges, maybe the series diverges. The divergence test only helps me when this limit is non-zero. Okay, so the divergence test isn't going to help. Let's think about now the integral test. I'm going to consider the function f of x is e to the minus x. We can sketch that. Looks like this. I can see that it is positive everywhere. It is continuous everywhere. And it is also a decreasing function. That tells me I can use the integral test. So I'm going to take the integral over the same bounds, 1 to infinity, of f of x. And I'm going to decide whether this converges or diverges. So first I replace that upper bound with a limit. Now I can evaluate this using the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. My antiderivative is negative e to the negative x. This is negative e to the negative b plus e to the negative 1. Or again, to make this a little bit easier to look at, I can call this 1 over e minus 1 over e to the b. b is going to infinity, so e to the b is going to infinity. So this term here goes to 0, and my limit is 1 over e. And notice this is a finite number. That means the integral converges. So, by the integral test, the series converges as well. Now something to note, I said before sometimes when we're writing we leave off these bounds if they don't really matter. All that matters is that I'm going to infinity. If I had started at 2 or 3, that wouldn't affect whether this converges or diverges. I'm adding up infinitely many things. And whether or not I add a few at the beginning or not isn't going to impact whether this sum converges to a number or whether it diverges to infinity. Again, just to quickly picture what's going on, the things I'm adding up, these areas, are going to zero. So the divergence test doesn't help. I want to know what happens to the sum of all of these different boxes when I add them up together. So I compare my series to the area under the curve of this function. And I find that the area under the curve of the function is finite. And by the integral test, we're allowed to say that because the area under the curve is finite, that sum of the series is finite as well. Now this isn't as clear drawn this way as it was before. Before, we said the area under the curve is going to infinity, and there's even more area associated with the series. But we can fix this by just shifting our boxes over to the left one. So watch this glorious animation. Okay, so the series is still the sum of the areas in these boxes. And now I can see that this is less than the area under this curve. If I'm just a little bit more careful about my bounds, the area under the curve is finite. It's not going to infinity. And now I can see that my series has even less area than that. So my series is finite as well. Take a minute, start to finish, answer this question on your own. When you get used to the divergence test, you can do it in your head. I look at the terms being added. I see that they are going to zero. That tells me I need something other than the divergence test. 
So let's use the integral test. The function we're using is 1 over x cubed. I know roughly what that looks like. On the interval in question, which is from 1 to infinity, this function is positive. It's not positive everywhere, but it's positive where we care about it. It is decreasing, and it is continuous. That means we can use the integral test. So I'm going to take the area under the curve from 1 to infinity of 1 over x cubed. Replace that upper bound by a limit. Use the power rule. So my antiderivative is negative 1 half times x to the negative 2. This is negative 1 half times 1 over b squared minus negative 1 half times 1 over 1 squared. which is 1 half minus 1 over 2b squared. As b goes to infinity, it's in my denominator here. This term goes to 0, so this whole limit is a half. It's not really important what that limit is, just that it's a finite number. This tells us the integral converges. So by the integral test, our series converges as well. And now we're done. If you want to use the integral test, you should always check that it's applicable. So you should always make sure that the function is positive, decreasing, and continuous. And if you're in a situation where you need to show your work, you should absolutely write that down. And usually, again, you can see that from a, a sketch.